We feel like pioneers of that mine, yes, and I'm very proud of that. It's an impressive project, extremely impressive. Producing over 35% of our annual production of over a million ounces of gold. This will be Agnico Eagle's largest producer within Agnico Eagle's portfolio of mines. The reserve was discovered by Cumberland 10 years ago. He was exploring this property and only very important reserves can justify investing a lot of money here in the north. It's three open-air pits, an important field of 3.5 million ounces with a 3.5 gram hole content. It's an extremely interesting project, but it's the logistic challenge that gives it distinctive characteristics. I would say every project has its challenges, but here the logistical challenge is the temperature. It's a project located in the complete center of Canada, in Nunavut, which means there are no roads. The only access is by air. There is access by water ten weeks of the year to bring supplies. The logistics alone make this project very special. When we arrived, the road was under construction. Doing construction in minus 50 or minus 35 degree weather is already very difficult. Transportation was by barge. Yes, it was a challenge. The logistics are one of the big challenges, bringing the equipment here. Ordering the equipment so that everything arrives on time and that nothing is missing. You can't forget a bolt, you can't forget a belt, otherwise all work stops. It's an incredible challenge. It's a large project. It's a project that requires many resources, thus making it a daily learning experience. It takes us completely out of our comfort zone. operated from our uh, center of strength or excellence and then we also have a schedule uh, of two weeks in two weeks out which is a very popular schedule for uh, our employees so as a result we were able to bring in very qualified people from the Abitibi. We had a large uh, number of uh, Inuit employees who were uh, really uh, looking for jobs and through training and recruitment we were able to select people from a large pool of candidates uh, in, uh, in here in Nunavut as well as everywhere in Canada. In this business like anything nothing is done by one person it's done by many and we have had a great reception here from the local community from the people and our people have really acquitted themselves very well and have done a, an excellent job extremely impressive. It's easy to get people because we have an interesting schedule. We have interesting activities that also attract people. They are home 14 days in a row, so that's quite appealing compared to other mind schedule that you will have. Yeah. Well, I mean the Menno Bank, 106 kilometers of a monte. À la ville de Baker Lake. Baker Lake Dispatch, you copy? Dans les bizarres, là, 
Tu sais, la visibilité, tu peux voir le ciel, mais tu ne vois pas en avant. Fait le flag, lui, il, il nous enligne. Là. On essaie de, de prévenir. Là, de... La sécurité est très importante. De... Personne sur la route pendant le bizarre. Avec l'équipe le, de l'environnement et tout, les nids d'oiseaux et tout ça ne euh, voulaient pas les déranger. Fait ils ont pris un autre chemin. Euh, C'est pour ça qu'il y a beaucoup de S dans la route. Une autre affaire et tout. Sur la route, on a à tous les 10 km des containers convertis pour un emergency. Il y a une fournaise là-dedans, il, il y a tout un kit de, de, pour survivre, tu sais, pour être capable. C'est pas mal bien fait à tous les 10 km. Je le sais qu'il n'y a pas personne qui est venu dans mon container à cause de mon seal. Là. Je sais pas si tu vas être là 16 jours ou 7 heures ou 17 heures, tu sais. Fait que il y a une tension. Our number one priority at Agnico is health and safety. We don't want to hurt our people. After that, we go for the profits. If we do not gain a return, there is no interest. But we will not go forward to the detriment of the environment. Everything is done in accordance with the environment, whether it's the transport on the road, the operation of the mine, or the management of the water on the site. We will recover more than 95% of the water that we will use from the lake. It will be recycled at the factory to minimize our impact on the environment. surface water is the, uh, the main concern because we're surrounded by lakes. So we have uh, a very intensive uh, monitoring program and we're reporting uh, those to the authorities and we, are, uh, we have very stringent criteria for water quality. We can say that Ignico is surely one of the leaders in environmental conservation, but I would also say that everything is done to avoid spreading pollution in the water. From drilling for iron to water treatment, concern for environmental management is, I would say, at the maximum of what is possible to do. Maximum, I would say that the biggest impact on the environment at the level of our mining here is the generating of electricity. We are obliged to use diesel generators that operate 24 hours a day to generate electricity because there is not one dam or hydroelectric installation to furnish electricity. We have the largest environmental department here based at Meadowbank and with respect to monitoring, with respect to inspections, with respect to using state-of-the-art equipment, uh, it has always been our company's philosophy that we will do the utmost to respect the environment. So we have always operated on a very transparent basis. Agnico is a very proactive company and they want to know all about the various wildlife issues in and around the mine. 
just collection of data so when the mine is in operation we have something to compare it to. This is a couple of years old. Okay, so Tom, where did you catch these caribous in our study area here? Um, here's Baker Lake and here's just, Meadowbank up here. Just around Shulz Lake. Lake. Up. I repeat, this is a 10 minute warning to blast in the North Portage. Did you copy that, Roger? Roger, but you, you got a copy. Copy that. Okay. Oh. Après nous autres, on se fait une surveillance toujours. Un cru sur le sautant pour être sûr qu'il n'y a pas personne qui embarque. Je vais passer à voir le compte à rebours. We work hard to minimize the effects on the fauna. For example, before a blast, we ensure that there are no caribou around to ensure respect for the fauna. Caribou is a, is a primary issue because this road is very long and it's, it can sometimes form a bit of a barrier. They've even proceeded to close the road during very peak migration periods, such as near the end of October and they just keep it closed until the caribou have moved out of the area. There was a little bit of a concern about the migrating um, pattern of the uh, caribou and uh, the effect of the road, but so far we've not seen anything. Mm. The tundra is an environment that regenerates very slowly. Therefore, we really wanted to make the smallest possible imprint. So we tried to take up the least amount of space possible and build the least amount of roads possible. And uh, they voluntarily uh, impose adaptive mitigation measures too, such as uh, a trail that they constructed around the mine, just to keep people that want to do some recreational activities on the trail and they and that way it keeps them from, you know, walking around and maybe stomping on the surrounding habitat. That will take a long time, like, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 years to come back to uh, its natural state. That's why you, we are really restricting the activities to a very limited uh, perimeter. It, it takes thousands of years to create uh, vegetation, to create mm -hmm. life. So if you change this, uh, this environment, with, uh, with big fishing pressure in only one area that will unbalance the whole area. I see. So that's why it's, it's not allowed to do that. When we have finished our mining explorations here, we will return the territory to its previous condition, if not better. Yes, we are going to create pits, but we are also going to create a habitat for fish in order to give back to nature. It is impossible to perform an operation such as this without making an impact. We're going to have an impact on the village, on society here. We will have an impact on the environment. But the goal is that when we leave, we will counterbalance that impact. We will do so until a balance is once again restored to the environment in an acceptable way. We are comfortable with the work regulations. We'll be respectful and go above and beyond what is required of us. Our objective is to exceed the standards, the laws, and to really be the best. We 
we actually have management plans for about everything that we do, who is in charge, what to do if something happens. I think it's very well taken care of. We are proud of what we've done, and we take our responsibilities and tasks to heart. There is enough management, control, and follow-up on the part of the government so that the mining companies are given responsibilities and are responsible. Presently, we can be proud of what takes place in the mining domain. The potential on the site itself, if we want to increase the mine life, is will be at depth. And we presently we have five rigs running since January, and we continue that the, the, the deposit stay open uh, at depth, and we cross the finger for the future. The explorations that were done in the last 12 years have helped us discover a surface field. There have been very few in-depth explorations in the past that have allowed us this extent of discovery. Here at Meadowbank, we're looking for iron formation. Drilling produces metallic minerals such as pyrite and pyrotite. Visually, they look just like gold, but they're not. However, they are an indication that there is gold present. These are minerals rich in iron. They're rocks that are ribboned with black and white. And so when the iron training contains pyrotite or pyrite, this is a good indication that there's gold in that location. The truck arrives with the rock from the mine, measuring about one meter or less. The main purpose of the crusher is to reduce the rock to less than 150 millimeters before feeding it into the hub. The first step for the hub is to now reduce the rock to less than 12 millimeters in this part of the grinder. Then, the second grinder will reduce the mineral to less than 100 microns. The first step in recovering the gold is by using the gravimetric method. This method will recover all of the free-form gold representing about 30% of our overall recovery. Now, we are at the cyanidation stage. We will cyanide 100% of the material going through the hub. Cyanide dissolves the gold. This step represents 64% of our recovery. We will recover the gold in the solution through the activated carbon cycle. The activated carbon absorbs the gold in the solution. It will then go through the carbon stripping. At that level, the gold will recover from the carbon and the gold in the solution will be sent to the refinery for the electrolysis process. 
The cathoid recovers the gold in a solution and then it is dried and refined. The liquid gold is now poured into a mold, producing a gold brick. Before sending the factory rejects to the waste area, the cyanide must be destroyed. Once the cyanide is oxidized, it is no longer dangerous to the environment. It comes in, in in a solid form, and it's only used in the mill. So that's how you uh, really make sure that there's no cyanide around the uh, anywhere. of a long, hard road, but it's also uh, the start of something very unique and special in Nunavut. The tundra, the Nunavut, is not something that we know before. And right now, with what we accomplish, and to see that brick uh, is incredible. It's historical, it's significant. This is the first ounce of many. That's almost a caribou. <laughs> okay. Oh. oh, two zeros? It has been a very difficult project, a hard project, and we could not have done it without them, without all their hard work and with all their, without their support. It's a very special day, and uh, once again, thank you very, very much. Merci, maintenant.